Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks of all ages, it's another episode of This Week in Google Glass. This week, $80 for Google Glass. We're also going to talk about the PGA getting uh, getting a retail store. Uh, you can There's a way you can rent Google Glass and a new little flashlight for Google Glass. All this and so much more you are watching This Week in Google Glass. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Power is here from Geekazine Think Magazine. Put in a geek, you've got Geekazine. And of course, This Week in Google Glass over at thisweekingoogleglass.com or twig.tv, T-W-I-G-G dot TV. Gigi was a friend of mine, you know, she was kind of cool. And then we broke up. So, um, And of course, my cohort in, cohort in crime for every single week, every single episode of Twig, Mr. Luke Wallace. I like the cohorts in crime. I like that. I said uh, cohort, not cohorts. Yeah, you started saying cohorts. I think it's it's I mean, it's my illness. Yeah, yeah. No, Introduce I'll, yourself. I'll, I'll, uh, yeah. So my name's uh, Luke Wallace, uh, Luke Luca on Twitter. That's L U K E L U C A. Or you can find me on Google Plus. That's uh, Google dot com slash plus Luke Wallace. Um, uh, yeah, we're here every week. It's uh, always a fun time and. Um, yeah, I guess we'll have, I don't know when you wanted to talk about anniversary dates and all that kind of stuff, but. Well, first of all, what do you think of my new Google Glass? This is the newest version of Google Glass now. Is what that 3.0? This, that... uh, this is version, uh, this is version, this is the stereoscopic version of Google okay. Glass. Conjoined and... twin version, maybe? Uh, per, yeah, okay, that works there. So, so no, basically this is uh, the new version of Google Glass and the old version of Google Glass. Of course, what happened to me where we last left off, um, 16.11 broke this pair of Google Glass. So right before I got to new, went to New York, I got this pair of Google Glass, um, and I haven't had time to send this, this pair back. So, uh, so I just thought I'd you know, have a little bit of fun with it and, of course, put it on top of my head. It's a little bit of uh, figuring out here. There we go. So now that looks crooked. Anyway, you get the idea. There we go. So that's that's what I was that's what I was going for right there. But anyway, yeah, this is this is the broken pair. I gotta send back, and then of course the new pair with the new. You notice the shades, right? Yeah, those are nice. So let me zoom in on these shades. These are the newer shades that you can get here. Let me uh, let me pull. These, these are the Oakley pair, and now I'm calling these the blue blocker pair because they look like a pair of blue blockers. You remember the 80s commercial blue blockers? No. No? Sorry. You know, no. I mean, in 80s or 90s, there was a commercial for blue blockers. They, they basically uh, blocked the sun uh, from your uh, driving experience and stuff like that. So mm. let, me, let me put this back. Now, these are the Oakleys, and of course, I get to keep the shades, and that's pretty cool. So... I, I could look like an '80s man. Yeah, what's up, man? Surf's up, yeah. Or I could, uh, or I could go and really get my David Caruso on by uh, by going with blue blockers. They're still ten years behind. That's okay. The in, in the insides of of Google Glass are are a couple of years behind anyway, so it really doesn't matter when it's all said and done. And I got two marks on my forehead from wearing my Google Glass like that, so I should probably do it like this. How's this? Looks good. Looks great. Don't you don't you wish you were as cool as I was, Luke? Every single day. Yeah. I wake That's... up and I'm just sad because it's like, you know what? Today <laughs> I will not be as cool as Jeffrey Powers. So I am. Uh, but you know, I I I deal with it. I in my own way. I I've come to terms with it. Okay. Um, it still hurts, but you know, I I can try. I can try. That's all I can do is try. You know, everybody hurts sometimes. Sometimes. It's true. It's true. You should so, write a song about that. I think somebody did already. Okay. So, and everybody does hurt. So, anyway. Uh, <laughs> sometimes. Well, well Luke, sometimes. What, how, was, how was your... Uh, we took a week off because I was in New York City for TechCrunch mm -hmm. Disrupt, and mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but, Luke, how was your, uh, how was your week off? What did you do this last week? Oh, it was good. Just catching up on some stuff. You know, we had... Mother's Day over the weekend, so that yes. was good. Spending some time with uh, my in-laws uh, for Mother's Day. Um, but we also uh, went kayaking this weekend, and that was fun. Um, we'd been before uh, 
in the past year, so I had glass the last time we went, but I was a little scared to take glass out on the water uh, the first time uh, that we went out to this lake because, you know, I didn't know what their kayaks would be, didn't know, you know, it had been a long time. So, mm-hmm. uh, But this time I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. You know, I got a life vest on anyway, so it's like if I go over, I should be able to keep my head above water, should be okay. Um, so I uh, took a few pictures out on the water, took some video. Uh, turned out pretty nice, and it, it was real nice being able to do the hands-free photo and video capture. Um, you know, it, it was good. It definitely, um, you know, definitely made it worthwhile. And uh, got a few looks from people, a couple of people asking about glass, so that's always fun. Uh, um, you know, went over real well. It, it withstood the, the water. I think the uh, the wind out on the lake was the only thing that, that really... Um, didn't turn out so well. It kind of ruined a lot of the, the audio, but you know, there yeah. wasn't really about the audio. It was more about the visuals. So, okay. um, you know, did you take any pictures? Yeah. Yeah. Took, took several pictures. I mean, most of them are, uh, of, or, you know, quite a few of them involved the back of my wife's head. Cause I was at the back we, we did a tandem kayak. <laughs> so we're both in one and she was in the front and I was in the back and, Got it. uh, you know, so a lot of the pictures she's in them, but you know that, that that's fine with me. Um, <laughs> but there were also, uh, you know, I got pictures of other people out there playing, having fun, some boats going by, all that good stuff. Cool. I didn't see them on the uh, on the page. Do you have them up on your Google Plus page? Or? I do have them up on Google Plus. I um, reposted them, uh, reshared them with the um, uh, this week in Google Glass. Uh, page. So if you go on to yeah. there and look at the post by this week in Google Glass, it should have a post that is, uh, yeah, I see it there. Kayaking uh, through glass. Kayaking fun through glass. I didn't see that, so let me see if I can find it really quick. It's right behind your uh, New York City pictures. Because <laughs> I'm in New York state of mind. Yeah, which is really neat. So yeah. it looks like that was a really neat trip. You got some oh, it was, it was a lot of fun. Oh, let's let's yeah. take a look at this. Let's, uh, let's we'll go through the slideshow really quick. So this is a file cabinet, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where they keep the equipment in a little, in a little uh, fenced-in area. Um, and then uh, you got some more on the fenced-in area. And then this looks like a video. Uh, yeah. And that's your wife. You know, we did, uh, uh, Jennifer and I did tandem kayaking last year, and... and we had uh, it was interesting to try and and get control of the boat, and there's free uh, free advertising for this kayak company. Um, <laughs> it was at, yeah, it's just at the park. It's just yeah, it's just the the kayak rentals at the park there. So. That's cool. And the wind, the water. Oh, is that a speedboat there? Yeah, a speedboat going by. Okay, uh, and that that's a nice that's got a nice uh, rustic feel to it, like it was taken in the seventies. Yeah, I, that's not filtered at all. So I think it just, I think pointing into the sun messed up yeah. the white balance or something and caused it to, yeah, to, to adjust. It. Yeah, I thought that one turned out pretty well. That's the, there's a good picture right there. Yeah, um, there's all the kayaks, so, you know, lined up. And there's you little, and you and you with there. your your. Now uh, somebody somebody alluded to me. This is actually a cool pose when you do this. It's like you're thinking. Mm-hmm. So in look now look in this picture. And, uh, well, you don't see it, but down, I guess down in this corner, which I guess you can't see. Where is it? There should be a shadow right there. And anyway, uh, it's, Vampires you're not seeing don't it. cast a shadow, so. I guess. Never. No, this is weird. It's like there's, I'm seeing a shadow right here of you taking the picture. Yeah. But it's not there in the picture. What? I think you're... That's I don't crazy. Know. I, I, I don't know. know. Here's here's another video. <laughs> I don't know how that's happening. That was that was seriously weird. I I I'm, I'm freaking out a little bit. So, anyway, so you get some water there and and uh, some cool pictures. Yeah. And it's uh, fun. yeah, it sounds it sounded like fun. So, but you also started uh you also started a a, a, a new little business here. Yeah, I guess I could uh, I can mention that real quick. So yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have to mention that in my introduction. So uh, I am the owner and proprietor of uh, BigLetterShirt.com, which is a site that gets you exactly what you would think. It's a shirt with a big letter on it. Uh, and you might say, that seems like a really dumb idea because why would I want a shirt with a big old A on it? 
Um, I mean, Alvin and the Chipmunks costumes aside, that seems like there'd be very few uses for it. Um, but the idea is uh, you have a shirt and uh, if you have a shirt that has a certain letter on it and then your friend has a shirt with a letter on it, you could, you know, get enough friends together and you could actually spell out a word, whether it's the name of a team or of a certain player or tacos or whatever, you know, like let's say you're a taco mm, place and you want to sell tacos and you're like, okay, we'll get all of our staff to wear tacos and then we can, you know, go out and pose with people and we can have our shirts that say tacos. And so, yeah, this is just a, a quick site that um, lets you uh, propose or that lets you, um, you know, buy whatever shirts you want and then you can spell those words out for football games, concerts, you know, you go to mm -hmm. the concert for, I don't know, whatever the kids listen to and you, <laughs> whatever, you those, whatever those young punks listen to nowadays, yeah. we got and the letter like, for oh, we want to spell out uh, Taylor Swift or something, you know, you spell out Swift. <laughs> or, or, or Queens of the Taylor. Stone Age or, uh, yeah, Queens of the Stone Age. Yes. That would be the <laughs> perfect one. Cause that's a lot of letters going on. There. So I love, I love that idea. <laughs> also, uh, you could spell out, uh, for the, you know, you could go see Saving Mr. Banks about, uh, Mary Poppins and spell out supercalifragilistic <laughs> expialidocious. I would just love it if someone buy that. Um, yeah, so, you know, but you can do whatever you want. Um, okay. And so it's just kind of a fun little idea that I've started on the side. So I'll have to add that to my introduction each week. So uh, are you going to have a group of people uh, get together with uh, with shirts uh, that spell out big letter shirts dot, or I'm sorry, big letter shirt dot com? So uh, uh, I actually do have biglettershirts.com as well because, you know. Well, yeah, but my point but, is that, you know, uh, you promote it that way by actually having people wear it and put it together as biglettershirts.com that way. People may see us at uh, various sporting events around Dallas. Uh, there, I've got a few ideas for uh, some events we could go to and spell out uh, the names of either the teams or the players or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, we have some, I have some ideas for promotion like that uh, as well. So Okay. Um, it's kind of neat because, you know, they, uh, I was thinking, you know, okay, you're at a sporting event and a player scores, you know, makes a great play. You know, the, the camera crew, they need to cut to the crowd, right, and show some crowd reactions. Well, they're going to cut to the crowd members that are wearing the letters for the player that, uh, you know, so like, I, you know, the Mavs, they got Dirk Nowitzki. And so you could have four guys and they spell out Dirk you know, on their shirt and like Dirk does something awesome. They're going to cut to the Dirk guys in the crowd. And, and so it's like, you'll get on TV from that. So it's like, I, I think it'd be kind of neat. You know, you support the team and, you know, maybe you get a little bit of fame from it as well. Well, what's really cool is, is their Cardinal red and white. And that's the colors from the Badgers, which are up in. Your city. Which is. Madison, Wisconsin. There you go. Madison. So, uh, so you, you you've got that going for you. Is, so is they all actually come in all uh, all different colors. So I've got. No, I don't care about colors. colors. <laughs> uh, uh, cardinal Cardinal red on cardinal white. Red, that's, that's perfect. A, yeah. Well, and that and that and uh, uh, green on uh, a yellow on green for the Packers. Ooh. I don't care about the Brewers. So uh, <laughs> you can do whatever. Uh, you got the Texas Rangers down there. You, that that'll that'll be that'll be good for me with the with your with your baseball teams and go yeah. from there. So. Yeah. But are you going to do? Uh, are you going to do Klingon letters too? Like I suggested. You know that's a really good idea. Actually, I was thinking that would is. be that would be really cool to do. So, um, you know, I can't say we'll be doing that immediately, but I love the suggestion. And if there's enough demand for it, and we see a lot of people asking for it, um, you know, it's definitely something we could do. Okay. All right. Well, we spent a lot of time. On that, yeah, we spent so way too much time on that. Thank big, you. Big bigglettershirt.com. Uh, no, it's great. You know, you, you, you're doing something different, and uh, I, I wish you the best on that. And uh, I know, I know this whole uh, Android planning thing. It was just a fad anyway, so you're not doing too <laughs> yeah, well on Android, that. So. I don't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> it's 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 gonna go away, and and uh, and it's it's death is imminent. So why it's not have that out. second job? <laughs> so uh, I, I might need a job. It's coming very soon, so uh, if, if you need another employee for BigLettershirt.com, let me know. Let me know. So. I will. 
I would okay, perfect. All right, well, let's get into the new, Well, actually, before we do, we talked about you. We didn't talk about me. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Yes, I went to New York City for uh, TechCrunch Disrupt. Uh, I was sponsored to go down there. I got about 25 videos. You can find it at youtube.com forward slash geekazine or geekazine.com. Think Magazine, put in a geek. You've got geekazine. Um, but it was great. We had I had a lot of fun. I'm going to show you the slideshow, my through glass slideshow here. This is a picture of a taxi cab. It's it was a, it was a very exciting taxi cab. I'm just gonna say that out loud. So, um, and then that little guy right there. Uh, well, first of all, the the computer. Get this. I I did not take my MacBook, which is what I'm using to do the show on. I always take my MacBook. But last week, uh, the folks at HP got me uh, uh, an EliteBook 1040 Gi to use, and this has got a built-in. It's got a 200. 23 gigabyte SSD and four gigabytes or no eight gigabytes of RAM in it and it was super small. I mean this is one of their ultrabook series uh, laptops. So I took it with me and it it was just a workhorse. It did all the videos I needed and I'm starting to think you know I'm going to start using this more towards uh, events like that because it's definitely going to reduce the amount of weight in my backpack um, as my back found out towards the end of the week as now I have a my back is hurting like crazy so anyway but anyway this was the the little guy right there is one of those little guys you you drop down and then they just light up crazily mm -hmm. I got some video of him I was doing some slow motion video and I got that up on my YouTube channels this apparently this at Times Square this is the Rockefeller Center it's called lunchtime 1932 lunchtime uh, the yeah. iron workers uh, sitting on the uh, on on top of the skyscraper having lunch, um, and that was just an amazing picture. So I took a couple photos of that. This one is uh, Benedict James. I met him at South by Southwest. He's a fellow glass uh, Google Glasser, and uh, and uh, we uh, we were just walking, and all of a sudden he noticed me as opposed to me noticing him, and it was just like holy. Oh, oh my goodness! What, what are you doing here? I, uh, he he was here for another event, and we were uh, we just got together and we talked for about twenty minutes. It was awesome. So and then of course uh, some of the pictures of New York City, including a big rat, and uh, some of the stuff at TechCrunch Disrupt. This is a three hundred sixty degree camera. Um, this is the this is a guy from a thing called Runner, which uh, basically uh, it's a little belt buckle iPad case, so you can have it strapped to your side. Um, and then uh, the folks over at, uh, oh, what was this? This was the, uh, it was one of the mini drones. This is like the lightest mini drone that they have. And they've got a Google Glass attachment to it. And that's the coolest thing. And that's going to come out very soon. It's very modular. So $60, you get the base. And then you can add for $20 more, you add this or that. And I think it's like $40 more and you can get the Google Glass attachment once it comes out. But I'm not 100% sure on that. So don't don't totally quote me on that. And then, of course, some other cool stuff. Somebody did Otto Austin's a uh, couple pictures. That, was, that wasn't really a Google Glass picture, but that was me in the Empire State Building right there. Yeah. Um, and then cool. during the whole time, they, of course, the, uh, the finals were happening, the uh, hockey finals. So mm. the, this bus was running around, and all these uh, the, the, uh, uh, the Rangers were, were screaming off the top of their lungs on that. So, and then they were shooting a commercial at Times Square for the next hottest man or something like that. So they, they took like 500 takes of these girls saying, we want the next hottest man or whatever they said. So, and, and then of like, course, I'm right here. I'm right yes. here. I'm right here. Oh, 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 you, oh, you're going to love this. I got an interview with the naked cowboy. Oh, and the naked cowboy. He actually, they, he actually did a couple little bits with them and said, Hey, Oh, you know, I thought I was the world's hottest man, you know, uh, okay. doing a little, little funny joke there. But, uh, yeah, I got an interview with uh, Naked Cowboy because he just got a sponsorship with uh, Fruit of the Loom, I believe it was. So that was pretty cool. And uh, so that was that picture. Well, Wait, it, is he naked or not? No, like, he's wearing why, underwear. Why he for... Boots and underwear and a hat. Yeah, yeah, I know. And, I know. Oh, man, his wife. He's, he's, there's, okay, he's got Naked Cowboy and got the Naked Cowgirl, which they're married. And okay. then there's another girl there. Uh, I guess a kid naked cowboyette or something like that. I don't I don't know okay. what you would call that. So, but anyway, they they really got that uh, going there. So, but anyway, here's a Lamborghini. I think as a famous person, I had no idea who this guy is, mm -hmm. but as he was uh, 
trying to turn the corner in New York, which is tough to do. Everybody's screaming and yelling at them, not not as in a "Hey, buddy, what the hell you do you think you're doing?" type way, but more of a but more of a "Hey, it's it's this guy, uh, J S Lambo." I'm assuming J S is his initials, and that's his Lamborghini. So. Yeah. Um, and then uh, some other pictures there. And then so that's basically me in New York City. Um, I, it's not my. F- I've been in New York City a few times, so it's not the first time I've been there. But the first time I've been there with Google Glass, in which I'm actually going to write an article about that. Um, I there's been too many negative articles, and so going to go, no, going to New York, I thought I'd get some negativity, and uh, with my Google Glass, and that didn't happen. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, I'm writing an article on it, so check it out over at uh, Geekazine this week in GoogleGlass.com. So, all right. So that that took up the first 20 minutes of our show. Sorry about that. We had to catch up. Two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. Lots of lots of cool stuff happened in two weeks, and lots of cool stuff happened with Google Glass in the last two weeks. The uh, the back and forth last time last time we were there like I said I had my broken pair of Google Glass they were I was waiting for the pair I got the new pair now I got to send this old pair back but since then they've updated it a couple times and now we're on version XE seventeen mm-hmm. and uh, why don't you, Luke why don't you tell us a little bit about what XE seventeen has well so there have been uh, quite a few updates uh, and so some of the biggest or most noticeable changes uh, have been around photo and video backup. So now there's actually a manual process. Before it was always a um, automatic process. If you were plugged in on Wi-Fi, it would automatically back up your pictures. Now uh, you can manually start that process. Even if you're not on Wi-Fi, even if you're not plugged in, you can say, yes, I understand this will use more battery. You know, it has to transfer all that data, um, but I want to go ahead and do that. So um, I will start the transfer process. And so you go through the menus and kind of say, yes, start a backup now. Um, okay. that, that's been the primary one. You can also delete those photos. So maybe you want to show, show someone your glass, but you're like, well, let me delete all my personal photos off of here real quick um, so that you're not seeing any of that. Um, that's a good thing. And then the phone answering uh, is one of the more, um, uh, it's the one I use a lot more. So the idea is if you're, uh, so I'm going to hold my phone. So if you've got your phone and your glass, you know, it's Bluetooth tethered to it, and you start the call from your phone, mm-hmm. before it would always kick over and start making the call on glass. Like you would you would dial the number or whatever, like, yeah. okay, call. And then it would use your, your headset to actually listen, you know, to the call and, you know, it would use the microphone in there. Now it doesn't do that. Now you actually uh, talk through the phone if you call from the phone. And if you call from glass and say, okay, Glass, make a call to whoever, it'll start calling from the Glass and use the Glass as the headset. And so it's a, just a little bit smarter there about how it picks. It, it assumes that if you're using your phone to dial, you want to use your phone to talk. Um, you know, your Glass might be in the other room. It, you know, you might just, um, like my situation is, um, it just doesn't sound as good through Glass, especially when you're outside or in a windy place. You know, that microphone picks up a lot of sound and it doesn't have the noise canceling that your phone might have. So... Yeah. Um, there's some reasons for it, but it, 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 overall, it's real good. Okay. Well, you know, uh, the interesting thing is when I was in New York, I had to actually switch over. I I, I didn't have that option. It, it automatically, when I called it on the phone, it would uh, automatically go to glass. So I don't know if I was on XC17, or I don't know if this is an XC17 update this this might be an xc 16.12 update now i'm looking at the date for that i don't know it might have been it might have also required a my glass update or something on your yeah on your phone yeah it says april 29th of 2014 and i know xc 17 wasn't out on april 29th at that point so uh so they did some more updates but we i know we're on xc 17 because that's that's i looked at that um, so let's see if there's any other updates. Maybe, maybe I just missed that. But, uh, it's, yeah, and then they're not really saying what XC17 has on there. The last one is this, uh, April 29th. So, um, XC17 pro- probably worked out some bugs or anything like that. Now, a lot of people are complaining because the XC17 
had, or the XT1611 really had battery problems to it. Um, when I was, once again, when I was out in the streets of New York City, um, I didn't see the battery problems that a lot of other people seen. In fact, you know, I, I would unplug it at the beginning. It, it would not, from what I was doing throughout the day, it would not keep a full day charge. I mean, I, about 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I had to plug my glass in to uh, recharge it up. So it would get back there. So, but I don't see the I don't see the the the, the uh, memory le or the the power leakage problems that some people see. And I know you saw it, Luke. Um, yeah, are I've you seeing having, that now? Yeah, I'm having battery problems. I'm having reboot, like lots of random reboots. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm gonna have to call them up and and talk to them and may, maybe get a new pair. You said you got a replacement pair. What exactly were the symptoms that they said were sufficient to get a replacement well first of all here's i can give you a pair right now right here <laughs> no no a working pair no. oh okay um well here's here's what happened when my uh, the reason why i got a new pair of google glass was because of the fact that they did the 16.1 are they yeah they did the 16.1 update which worked perfectly for me no no they did the 16 update which worked perfectly for me and everybody was starting to complain about some sort of reboot problem so i was like no xc16 worked great for me but then the, the next day they updated 16.11 and it got worse and 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 my glass went into the eternal reboot from hell mm -hmm. and uh and so that's that's what happened i couldn't do anything to get out of that reboot so mm -hmm. what they did was they sent me another pair along with the new accessory um so it's a uh, if, if in your case, if if you if they if they determine that it's an actual problem with the power, then yeah, you'll probably get a new pair. But if it's not, then you might have to live with that. So you're gonna have to yeah. really determine, really tell them, hey, this is a power problem, and not you know I got the Beetlejuice app loaded on here, and that's that's yeah. leaking. Yeah, no, I've got a factory like reset on it. You know, wipe the whole thing down, and it's. Uh still having issues so okay well if that's the case then yeah i would call them up and I'd say and and their their process for uh customer support is a lot different now uh it, it's uh you actually call you actually go to a web page and then you oh, press yeah. a button and you put in your phone number and then they call you and then they do the uh they do the the switch up yeah. so it's it's interesting it's still not the greatest customer support <laughs> that's blown my socks off in fact i've been talking to this one woman who on Saturday, she got she had uh, she had the reboot problem happen to her, so she called in, and they said, well, you know, uh, how did they say it? Uh, they they put it in the fact as like, well, you know, uh, maybe we'll send you out. Uh, we'll we'll take a look at the problem, and then we might send you out a pair next week. And she goes, yeah, but I'm traveling next week, and I need to I need to use these for or in two weeks, and I need to use these for the show. And he goes. Well, maybe then you can use them in the next time that you go there. That's that's what she said that they said they told her. Maybe next time, you know, as in, you know, we're not even going to try and get another pair out to you. So maybe uh, maybe you can use them next time you go out to wherever you're going to. Yeah. So I that's that's horrible customer support, folks. I don't care. I don't care how you say that. You never, ever, 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 ever tell somebody. Well, you know, maybe maybe you use it on your next trip because that doesn't fly that wouldn't fly with me in fact i told her you call them back and you insist that you that uh, you get some uh service here and it was it was not good i i did not you know i've i come from a customer service background i know that that's like 101 you don't say stuff like that period so yeah. anyway i'm not i'm not trying to rant hopefully the call was recorded for quality assurance <laughs> <laughs> and maybe because someone will listen to that hopefully yeah um i don't think that's ever gonna happen uh, yeah we won't get into that let's 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 move on here so anyway you got some new updates with your google glass if you're still having problem call customer support and talk to them and see what they can do about it and and, uh, and go from there all right let's move on here uh this, really quick uh this is a new thing called glass light and uh let me show it to you here it's a little dongle that you can put onto your Google Glass. As you can see, it goes in the USB Mini, and it's got a smart light in there. Um, and uh, I think it's, what was it? Uh, 
Was there a way to turn that on? Do you remember? Yes, you actually use voice commands. That's what okay. made it different from the last one that we showed uh, a month or two ago where it was a little switch that you flipped on. This one actually has an app that goes along with it that lets you turn it on or off with a voice command. Okay, glass, uh, toggle flashlight, and it will send the right commands and get that flashlight turned on and off. That's so it makes it a little bit more you know, useful, maybe something you could just leave plugged in all the time and... Um, if you were in those kind of situations yeah. fairly often. Yeah. Well, it doesn't look like it's too much of a light. I mean, enough to maybe illuminate a darker picture or something like that. But Yeah, I don't think I don't it would be great for yeah. video um, or anything. But it is also saying that you have to have the XC16 uh, firmware on your glass to let the, uh, let the command go through. Um, otherwise, you'd have to jailbreak or root the uh, device to go from there. So... Um, it's not too bad, and the price was what twenty twenty nine ninety five. Yeah. So, uh, are you going to get one, Luke, or no? Uh, probably not. I'm not usually in situations in the dark like that where I wish I had it. But yeah, you never know. I got I got a phone that has a flashlight to it, so I'll probably use that for now. So, but if you want to, we'll have the link in the show notes if you want to get yourself the light. And of course, you want to do a review on that, let us know, and we'll come on come on the show and talk about yeah. the light. Yeah. So, all right. Next up. Did you know that you can rent yourself a pair of Google Glass? That's where we're going from here. This is a website called Lumoid.com, and one of the pro they they uh, they rent out different types of cameras, and one of the cameras that you can rent out is a Glass Explorer edition. Now, we've been trying to figure out: do they have like five or ten of these things ready ready to uh, the hand out at, at moments notice? What we've determined is they're only saying that you can get the sh the charcoal color which makes us believe they only have one pair, maybe two at the most. Because, you know, $1,500, that's a lot to, to spend in, in that. And, and if nobody rents it out, then, you know, what do you do? So, and of course, renting it, it's, as you can see, it's $32, $32 a day, excuse me, with a min minimum of three days rental. So for about uh, 90, $96 plus tax, about 100, 105 bucks, you can get... Uh, you can get uh, you can get Google Glass, and of course, if you rent it for ten days or longer, they give you twenty five percent off, which is pretty cool. Um, but it's still about thirty dollars a day, and that still comes to less than the price of the actual Google Glass. Now, um, it doesn't look like that there's any ex that comes with any of the accessories. There's no shades or 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 anything like that. It's just the base Google Glass. So, um, Luke, should should we start renting out our Google Glass? I don't know. For thirty bucks a day, it, it definitely is more tempting than, uh, you know, a, a punch in the face where it's like, hey, thirty bucks, and then they're saying, hey, you got to do three days. So really, it's like a hundred bucks yeah. uh, for a three-day rental. So, um, you know, if somebody came up to me and said, hey, can I borrow that for the next three days? Here's a hundred bucks. That'd be pretty tempting. Uh, you know, you only have to do that fifteen times, and then you got the entire price of you know glass paid off. So. Um, I think Cause it's because it is better than a punch in the face. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. If you say, "I'll punch you in the face or give you thirty bucks," and I'm like, "I'm pretty sure I want the thirty bucks." What kind of punch are we talking? And and they're and they describe the punch, and I see how big they are, and I'm like, "Yeah, that would hurt." I think I'll take the thirty bucks. So, uh, yeah, not not. A, I don't. Wouldn't have to think. Wait, 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 wait. They're, they're yeah, either punch in the face or thirty bucks. So. I wouldn't say I'd want the thirty bucks if they're offering me that type of option. Yeah, that's or what I'm a punch saying. in I would the face. Uh, no, no, no. That, but yeah. but you you mean either a punch in the face or rent for a day for thirty bucks? Yeah, <laughs> you're making yeah. it sound like I'm gonna punch you in the face, or I'm just gonna give you thirty bucks. Yeah, yeah. Like because the punch in the face that's a good deal too. I mean, free punch in the <laughs> how face. How was how was the punch in the face a good deal? Well, How is know, that a good deal? <laughs> maybe maybe if you've got a crooked nose and they put your they yeah. realign your nose or something like okay I can see that but how is a punch in the face a good idea? The health benefits of a punch in the face are well known. Uh, you just just Google it, you'll see. Punch in the face. I think it. You know if you got like congestion, punch in the face helps with that. So it's like well how am I feeling? Maybe a punch in the face is what I need right now. 
I, I, I know a boot to the head is a good idea for mm-hmm. some people, but uh, yeah. I, I, I am not sure about a punch in the face. Well, we don't condone any type of violence on this show, nope. even though Luke's from Texas. He's kind of, you know, uh, we won't get into that. But yeah, the whole point is, violent person, yeah. Is, yeah, well, you know, you, if you were raised in the woodshed, you, you go to the woodshed. Let's just put it that way. So um, let's move on here. We're going to go over to PCMag.com. Uh, Google Glass opened up a first retail store. Ha, ha, ha. Um, as they opened up a store at the PGA event for fifteen hundred dollars, you can. Uh, they were trying to get the golfers because you know golfers, or as as some people say, golfers. The golfers they have the uh, they have the ability to buy that type of stuff, you know. Right. So they were at the uh, at the Players Championship PGA event in Sawgrass in Florida, and so Glass opened up a Meg Shift retail store. Um, in hopes that uh, that these people would buy Google Glass. In fact, now, and I kid you not, if we go down this article here a little bit, it says not only did you get a pair of Google Glass and a glass accessory, you would all, they also threw in a miniature camera accessory for one's golf clubs absolutely free. So apparently, from what I understand, it's a, some little device that actually hooks up onto the golf club and records your golf swing or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that talks back and forth with Google Glass, um, or if there's a new app that 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 we don't I don't know of yet. But that looked pretty interesting. And for fifteen hundred dollars, like I said, golf is not a cheap sport. Mm. And a lot of people, you know, there are. I'm not saying that golf is for the rich. I'm never going to say that because you know I was never rich and I played golf for the longest time. So. Uh, but a lot of people, you know, especially when it comes to PGA championships, those guys kind of have money. So uh, if they can sell off 50 or 100 pair of Google Glass for that, why not? So do you, do you play golf at all there, Luke? I do not. Um, yeah, I, I uh, don't. Um, I think it's neat. I, I think, like you said, it's, you know, golf tends to be a more expensive hobby. You know, uh, if you play a lot, if you... You know, you can spend a lot on clubs. Now, you can also spend, you know, a kind of more average, reasonable amount and and do just fine. Um, yeah. You know, there's lots of ways to play that aren't expensive. But there are also people that spend a lot of money on clubs and, and you know, all the, the stuff that goes along with uh, going to the golf, uh, you know, golf club. You know, there's, there's private uh, golf clubs and stuff here. Uh, yeah, I know, I know a... Um, um, a caddy for one of the professional golfers, uh, personally. So, um, it, that, that's kind of neat. I know I, they travel a lot. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, it, it's a, it's a neat thing that they're trying out. And, you know, it, if you show the picture there from the actual event, it's like, it wasn't much of a booth. It was kind of a table with a sign hung above it that said glass, you know, yeah. the, the logo. So, you know, very, very basic. I'm sure it was just kind of a, Let's try this out, see if, you know, like, see what kind of feedback we get. Just more of an experiment than anything else. Um, but, well, you know, kind of neat. Well, I, uh, you know, I, well, like I said, I used to play golf. I haven't played golf in a few years simply because of the fact that I've been building a business. And uh, golf, you know, $60 a crack for 18 holes of golf, just, I couldn't justify it. But when I did play golf in my in my heyday, I would, uh I would, I, I'd get lessons, and, and I encourage anybody that golfs to go get lessons. Go, go get at least six lessons, so at least you have a more decent game. You don't feel so lost when you're slicing left and, and hooking right. Um, I, had the, I had the opportunity to learn from Jack Stricker, which actually is Steve Stricker's uh, uncle, and, uh, and he, he gave lessons. Of course, Steve Stricker from where I live, and, and that, that is what Luke Madison, Wisconsin. There you go. So, um, so Jack Stricker uh, taught me how to play how to play better golf, and so and, and I'm and I'm grateful for that. Uh, but uh, you know the accessories that we get, the golf clubs. And I paid three hundred dollars for a driver um, that fit me size wise. Um, I paid a couple hundred dollars for those shoes. I paid the, uh, mm-hmm. I paid forty to fifty dollars for golf gloves, and I always wore two gloves uh, on my hands. 
uh, and because it felt more comfortable to do that. Um, and then, of course, you got to get the silly golf pants, which is a couple hundred dollars right there, and blah, blah, blah. The whole point is that, you know, you pay it, you spend a lot there. So when somebody says, oh, yeah, and okay, here's $1,500 for this pair of Google Glass, are you going to say, yeah, I can afford that? Or no, that's going to that's gonna eat up all my greens fees for the next yeah. summer, and then I'm not going to play golf this summer or get out to the driving range at all. So um, there are people, like I said, there's people that make lots of good money off of, uh, off of golf and Google Glass, but there's a lot of people that play golf, and they're not, they're not making that type of money. And they just enjoy the game. They're not. They're not going to get into glass that much. So, yeah. I don't know. Now there are some golf apps already for Google Glass. So I'm yes. sure they were playing those up as well. You know, kind of promoting those as part of this, saying, "Hey, look, you can see the distance to the pin and or whatever the, the hole." I, I don't. <laughs> I'm not a <laughs> sportsman. Uh, so. Why not? I I don't think I can ever learn the lingo right. I think that's my biggest problem: the vocabulary. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, the one thing the one thing that I could see Glass excelling in is some sort of range finder, mm -hmm. being able to determine where the where the flag is and tell you how far away it is, and stuff like that. And and of course, getting data from the uh, from the servers, you could find out that the, that this hole was a dog leg to the right or or something like that. And then and then kind of make some uh, adjustments. Maybe even uh, and there's new golf balls that have GPS trackers in them. So you can you can uh, play, pull up an app on your phone and you can find your golf ball without having to search for 20 minutes in the rough, because yeah. I've done that a thousand times over. So, so that uh, uh, you know that's that's a little bit of the lingo right there. Yeah. Did you catch what that? What about what about the wind? You know, would it be nice to say, okay, you're 300 yards and the wind is, oh yeah, four miles an hour. You know, whatever. And like if it could show you kind of like how perpendicular the wind is to your direction. And stuff, and kind of, kind of show you all that. I think that would be even more valuable. So you could be like, okay, so it's going to take it a little bit to the left. So I need to aim, you know, more to the right. Or it'd be interesting if it could do the cal, you know, do the calculations and tell you you need to hit, you know, 20 yards to the right of the hole. Yeah. To, and that will, in theory, if you're hitting exactly that way, in theory, that'll, you know, well, you know, the, the hole more. actually, I. I, I it, it could actually, if it queries your phone and finds out the exact location of where you are, and you could go, you could tap your glass and go, okay, glass, golf help. And then all of a sudden a little video comes up with the instructor exactly around the spot that you're at and says, you know, okay, we're at this, we're at this point where you're about 150 yards away from the pin, and if you have a good strength on using your club, then, then a good five iron. Uh, might be it. You might want to approach it because there's uh, there's a sand trap behind or sand trap in front, and it gives you instruction, and goes from there. So that's a possibility of a future app uh, where you know you don't have to do much. You just have to have an internet connection to pull that all off. But and, uh, yeah, help you learn kind of how to assess each situation. Yes. Even if like you know, eventually you wouldn't need the glass to help you with that. But yeah, while you're learning, it's like, so what should I be trying to do here? Should I be you know playing it a little short should i be trying to yeah. you know if anything overshoot it because i don't want to hit the sand trap that's in front of it you know all that kind of stuff that you're talking about yeah. of you know just like that, that's a very neat idea i think a lot of beginners would probably like that oh well not only beginners but uh regular people uh professional people that that are that are trying to improve their game uh because they can't afford to have a caddy come out and say you know uh take it to the left take it to the right um, but yeah, if, if you have a if you have a golf uh, a pro the pro golfer standing there right where about where you are, and all of a sudden a video pops up and he says, "Yeah, I've been in this position. We have the sand bunker behind the the pin, so you don't want to overshoot the pin. Um, yeah. But you but you have a downward roll, so you want to be on top of that for an easier putt for for par." Um, then you get you get the, all the options and you you can understand the green and, and yeah he could even point it and you could actually see about the same uh, the same look as you would see uh, that you would be seeing right there and then he'd be pointing his finger and say so you just point you go here and you're you're safe if you go here if you really want to challenge yourself but you got to be on the other side of the pin to bring it down or something like yeah. that um, I I know I I went a little bit overboard on that, but you, you get the idea. Yeah. Um, and I think 
I think we need to start building this app, Luke. I mean, forget that big letter shirt thing. Let's 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 get this app going. With my golf expertise, there's no way it could fail. There you go. You're gonna have to have a picture of a big golf ball too. Yeah. For a shirt. Think, but I think you could do it even if it was uh you know specific to a certain course. If you found the right course, you know, even just some of the maybe more of the high end you know golf courses, you could. You could probably tailor it pretty well and say, like, you know, it's just for this one course, and we've gone through and we've done 40 videos on each hole, you know, from all these different positions, so we can really yeah. kind of focus it to, like, almost exactly where you're at. Yep. Um, and if you're, like, five five feet away from the tee box because you shanked your, <laughs> your ball, and then the, the instructor can come on and go, hmm, well, let's see. This is a very interesting second shot here because you shanked your ball. And, uh, well, let's see, uh, I, I, I would say, hey, you know, just take the mulligan and go back to the tee box and start over again. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, let's move on from there. Do you guys, oh, well, you guys let us know. I mean, we have the Q&A section somewhere on this board here. You're going to see it either on this side or this side. Uh, feel free to ask questions during the live portion, but you can always contact us uh, through uh, twig.tv, jeff at twig.tv, twigg.tv, or luke at twig.tv. And, uh, and go from there. I know that uh, some of you have been emailing me, uh, of course, with the whole 1611 uh, debacle. I've gotten some emails from that, so I thank you very much on that. But uh, what do you think? Uh, if you're, if you're, are you a golfer? Would you buy Google Glass at $1,500 just to improve your golf game? Um, let us know, and we'll go from there. So let's move on. Uh, we've got two more articles here, and then we'll get you on your merry way. Uh, first of all, uh, Luke, uh, you found this one, right? Uh, Google Wallet coming to Google Gla or yeah, coming to Glass. Yeah, this is definitely marked as rumor. Um, something about uh, you know nothing official yet, but it's about Google Wallet possibly coming to Glass. They would say it would let you send money to people. Right now, you can actually send money using Google Wallet via Gmail. Uh, okay. You can write an email and attach money to an email. And what it's really doing is it's uh, setting up a Google Wallet transaction and charging you the money. And then you, it sends the, the recipient an email with a link that then they can deposit that money in their Google Wallet account. So the emails or the the money isn't like encrypted in the email itself and sent. It's just kind of <laughs> authorizing the transaction and sending over a link um, yeah. that kind of ties it. So, you know, um, it, it may, it's not as scary as it might sound to people of like money in an email. What? Uh, and so it wouldn't be, the, it'd be, I would guess something similar here where you would say send money to, and all it would really do is send a Gmail, you know, yeah. send a, an email through Gmail uh, with, that attachment from Google Wallet the same way it does right now with a Gmail attachment uh, for Google Wallet. So I'm guessing that's all it is, is now you'll be able to send money that way. Uh, Google takes a small fee of that, as all of the, the people do. Um, they generally will waive that depending on how you're funding your Google Wallet, if you're funding it from a checking account instead of a credit card. But, um, you know, however much money you've got. So you could say, okay, Glass, send money to... Jeffrey Powers, $100, confirm. So if you have glass and this feature comes out, you should play back this video. I think that would be, I think uh, everyone would like that. And my uh, Google Wallet ID is geekazine at gmail.com, geekazine <laughs> at gmail.com. This, this show is not free, folks. We need to pay our bills. In fact, the, the, uh, the domains are coming up uh, for renewal. Uh, in the next month here, so mm. and domain I can uh, fees have changed. So, geekazine at gmail dot com. Go ahead and throw money uh, my way on the wallet. Now I'm 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 looking at this. I'm I'm guessing that there's got to any type of transaction has to have at least one step auth authentication. Um, mm -hmm. But now we're going into this two two step verification authentication, and I don't know how you can do that with Glass. I mean, uh, well, there's one way. I mean, you can do a swipe tap type thing, mm -hmm. uh, passcode or something like that. But if I say, okay, Glass, send money to JoJo, um, then there's got to be a way to better do it because, you know, I, I can sit there and put my Google Glass on, on you or anybody else and then have them tap and then say, okay, Glass, take a picture. And then it takes a picture. And I'm not, I'm not wearing Google Glass at the time. Yeah. So, you know, and, I, and I've had people threaten me and say, okay, Glass, search 
the worst porn in the world or something like that. Um, and uh, it would, it's just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but uh, the whole point is that, uh, you know, somebody could walk up and say, okay, Glass, send money to blah, 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 at blah, blah, blah. Now, the voice yeah. recognition will probably go, it'd probably mess that all up to begin with, but it could be successful. And next thing you know, $100 has come out of your account. So I would, I'm hoping that they've got some sort of authentication swipe forward or, or do, your, do a passcode swipe uh, to uh, verify that this is you um or 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 whatnot so uh i mean we'll, we'll see what happens but uh, uh i like the idea um i don't know how they're going to implement it without any type of authentication yeah there's definitely enough issues with this that it's not something that has an obvious solution that you know everyone else could just do really quickly um there's there's definitely some challenges here so uh, i agree there's authentication issues there's you know, how do you decide who to send it to? There's, yeah. you know, security issues, all that kind of stuff. Because you'd hate to leave your glass just sitting around somewhere and somebody picks it up and taps through and sends money to themselves and pulls it from your Google wallet. So maybe exactly. it'll require that you have a passcode on your glass and then you have to enter it again once you want to send money, things exactly. like that. You know, there, there's a lot of the things they could do. Um, like I said, this is all kind of rumor. And maybe this is something that we'll never actually see because they won't find solutions that they're happy with. Yeah, um, but you know, it'd it'd be kind of neat if you could say, "Oh, we, oh, I, you know, how about you pay for this, and then I'll just pay you back because uh, I don't have enough cash on me or whatever." Yeah. So then you just go through and say, you know, send money to so and so five bucks, and there you go. You, you know, this was the problem I was having when I was in New York. I had I had a sponsor for my show, and of course they paid through PayPal. So there was one point in time I didn't have money for the cabs and stuff like that because it was all sitting in paypal or transferring over to my bank account so there was a there was a little bit of in between where i had to really watch my dollars because it didn't have that sponsorship cash in there so um it would be nice to to be able to have that as an alternative um so you know i can pay you know just like a credit card so i don't have to take out a credit card um, and I just have to relay the signature and maybe the uh, security digits or something like that. And, and I, you know, I'm next time in a target and they're saying it's $45. I just go, okay, wallet pay. And then, uh, maybe a security code comes up on their little, uh, touchpad thing. And then I push in my security card and go from there. So lots of different ways that they could handle it. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that right now, the way that we ha have glass it, it's just not secure enough for yeah. a payment process to go through, um, especially, and, and we're going to talk about this in this next, next article here. Um, it's about six months ago, eight months ago, somebody actually tore down the version one pair of Google Glass. Well, somebody tore down a version two pair of Google Glass, and we found some very interesting information. We're going to go here. This is over on Recode.net. The first run, they believed it was about $80. But now we're believing uh, we're believing it's one hundred fifty dollars, right, Luke? Yeah. So this is a IHS, and they said they tore it down, um, and they went through each of the little individual components and priced them out. They didn't. I I couldn't find anywhere where they went into a lot of detail, um, but they. Uh, they, they somehow come up with the pricing for these. I'm guessing they look at bulk pricing for what it would be to buy, you know, 50,000 of these uh, components uh, to assemble them. Um, and they come up with 132 in parts, and then they estimate $20 in assembly, okay. uh, you know, charges. Yeah. So 150 bucks. 150 bucks for all of that. Now, folks, this is uh, basically, here's, here's what it is inside the processors. is Texas Instruments. OMAP4 chip, OMAP4 a chip, based on Cortex A9 core design by ARM, uh, which is about a $9 chip right there. Uh, $152, though, with assembly, is 10, 100 times less than $1,500. So <laughs> where is the other $1,300? $48 going, Google. Uh, and that's it's, it's kind of sad if you think about it. We knew, but we knew what we were getting into as explorers. We we really did. Um, it was no it was no shock that then they 
uh, they said Google said straight up, you know, this is not going to be state of the art technology. This uh, this processor is a couple years old. Um, I, I I refer to it as your old HTC One Android phone. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still got a single core in it. It's not any type of dual core or quad core, which most of these phones have nowadays. And uh, it's got minimal m- uh, memory in there. And, of course, the, the majority of your Google Glass is battery. And uh, and everything else is going to be as small as possible. So, uh, you know, you don't, you don't get, you're not getting the latest greatest. Mm-hmm. Um, you're getting a couple of years old. And that's, you know, a lot of people are, are I got that little shock. I paid $1,500 for that. That's crazy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's a couple of things on it. I mean, it is it is definitely you know ten times more for, you know they're they're charging ten times the bill of material. So there's a few things that doesn't cover. So the software, you know, how much money did they spend building the software? I would argue as much or more than all the hardware costs. Right, all those employees writing software aren't cheap. Um, yeah, no, yeah, that's 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 kind of a uh, no. Software's not free, man. Well, like, yeah, I know software is not know. free, but you got to remember that it's based on the Android operating system. So most of that yeah. code was already written. So a lot of the uh, they just stuff they was. just needed to patch it up for Google Glass, and and so that's well. I don't. It, okay, let's let's put it this way. And if you watch these pawn shows, you, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But, uh, you know, somebody comes in with a tricked-out vehicle. And they come up to the pawn guy and goes, I want $25,000 for this car. And they go, well, how do you think it's $25,000? And they go, well, because I put a lot of time and effort into this and a lot of materials. And they go, yeah, that's all well and good, but that's your time and materials. And that doesn't go with the product. And the product, what's, what's in the product and so to, to say that they're, they're tacking on software development and R&D as part of the price of the device, you know, that means that if I try to resell this pair of Google Glass, which I can't right now, but if I was to try and sell this, resell this pair of Google Glass, I'd be lucky to sell them for $300 uh, to a pawn shop to, mm-hmm. so they could get five to $600 on the resale. So it's just... And, and I could say, well, yeah, I just put a G-pop on here, and it looks really cool. And they're going to go, you know, it's just that's, that's, your, that's your thing. If it's, somebody else isn't going to like it, they might take it right off. So what's, what you put your heart and soul into, other people will just, you know, they don't care about that. So, um, but going back there, like I said, they're already programming for Android. They're just putting in special hooks for glass. And I, you know, I, don't, I, I, I would say that their time spending programming for Google Glass is not as much as they are spending time programming for Android all across the board. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. I mean, it's definitely a smaller, you know, feature set. It, you know, the interface is simpler. They did have to rebuild pretty much the entire interface, uh, but it was much simpler to build, you know. I mean, yeah. there's not nearly as much to it. So I'm, I'm not trying to say, you know, it, it took as much work as that. Um, I mean, we knew the costs were going to be a lot more than the bill of materials. I, just for fun, I dug into uh, this IHS group teardown of the, um, they have the Galaxy S5 numbers and the iPhone 5S numbers. Okay. That's interesting because it's S5 and 5S. Uh, <laughs> that is that is interesting. Like, so that, that's where we're at now. Um, and so I looked into that, and so the iPhone 5S, which if you were buying outright, like you had to buy with glass, would be seven hundred dollars, mm-hmm. something like that, right? That's that's how much it is off contract. That's the yeah. real cost of the phone when they sell it. The teardown that they got came out to um, like one ninety nine, you know, two hundred yep. bucks basically for it. Yeah. Uh, the Galaxy S five, which is in that same kind of six fifty, seven hundred, seven fifty. I, I don't know exactly uh, what the the retail price is off contract. Um, they, it was like two fifty something. It was a, it was a little bit more um, in material costs. Um, I don't know exactly what that was. If that's just a bigger screen or whatever it was, I I, I didn't try to dig into the numbers of why the S five was a little bit more than the than the five uh, S. But um, regardless of of uh, the the subtle differences there, both of them are around you know two hundred two fifty, and they sell for seven hundred. So 
uh, you know, that's that's three times now. That's not ten times, right? Yeah. Um, so so there is some inflation there. So Apple, you know, even Apple doesn't say, well, it's two hundred, you know, yeah. in parts, and so we sell it for two fifty, you know. But on the other hand, uh, it, it, in, in putting your thought into it, even if even if they 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 put the thought into the coding and stuff like that, I would guess that would be about fifty dollars per unit. So let's say let's say at the most you got one hundred fifty two dollars for the Google Glass, fifty dollars for programming. That's still two hundred dollars. They need to make money. Okay, six hundred dollars, six hundred to seven hundred dollars. Boom, that's your Google Glass. And now, and, and so that's about three times the amount that it takes to actually make a pair of Google Glass. And if they sell sixty thousand pair, fifty dollars at sixty thousand pair is more than enough to cover any programmers and the code that they put into there. Now, oh, no. programmers are expensive in San Francisco. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can debate that uh, how how that works. But once again, you also got to remember they're coding uh, for a cross-platform situation. They're not. This isn't specific for Google Glass. Um, it's it's eventually going to go into whatever they make for a watch, whatever they make for another phone or, or anything like that. So all this cross code, you figure about fifty dollars per pair um, for per device, whether it be Google Glass or an Android phone or, or a Chromebook or whatever. Uh, that that's that's how that goes. And and we could even go up to a hundred dollars, and I'd still be comfortable with that. But still, that would you know as long as they're making two and a half times. The amount that they put of money that they put into a device, hmm. then they 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 can be successful at that. And two and a half times, even with if we say two hundred fifty dollars for a pair of to make a pair of Google Glass, that means that they'd have to sell it for seven hundred to seven hundred fifty dollars um, to actually make some money off of that. So that's still not fifteen hundred dollars when it all comes down to it. They're, they're taking. They're they're making five to six times more than everything that costs in that pair of Google Glass, and why they haven't started thinking about reducing that? Technically, they have thought about reducing it, because now if I, I from what I understand, now if you buy a pair of Google Glass, you're getting an accessory for free, mm -hmm. whether you get your your frames or you get these these really cool. Uh, uh, blue blocker shades or, or something like that, you're getting an accessory for free. And, that, and you know, these things, I think, what was this, uh, $125 for this type of frame? Something and, like that, yeah. And, your, and your frames were, what, $225? Yeah, mine were $225 plus tax. And, yeah. Um, you know, so uh, I, I think you're, you're absolutely right that there's um, a lot of room that they can come down on price, um, which I think is good for everybody that was thinking – you know, or that was saying, well, I'm not going to buy it if it's $1,500 when it's, you know, just publicly available, just go on and order it. Exactly. Um, so, like, we we had already talked about this before, uh, you know, and now those predictions are, are getting much closer into, uh, you know, becoming reality as far as we were thinking more like three to $500 would be a nice price for it to come out at. And it's looking like if the this, you know, bill of materials is right, that's not a crazy amount for it to drop. Like if the bill of materials was $600, well, you know, they're not going to sell them for 500 because they're not going to take, you know, that big of a loss on every single unit. But yeah. if the cost is a lot less, um, but, but here's can, my, here's, come down. here's my thing is why haven't they started coming down already? Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, maybe not, maybe not to $700, but maybe down to $1,200. I mean, you know, there's a lot of glass explorers that are just going to say, yeah, I paid the $1,500, but I paid it for the early adopter option so I could start getting my programs ready for Google Glass. It was well worth the $1,500 at that point. Yeah, you're going to have some people that are going to complain and say, why did I have to pay $300 more for my pair of Google Glass? Why can't they give me $300 back? Yeah. And well, uh, you got it, it a year before, so you know. Yeah, you got a year before. Not only that, but you also, when we got our pair of Google Glass, we also got the Oakley shades and we got the clear shades, which they don't yeah. even have anymore. So yeah. we've got it. We've got a deal. And technically, it's all said and done. We still have these shades. I still have the clear shades sitting in the box. So. Yeah. You know, it's it's part of that beginning that beginning price, and and if I you know if I was to do it all over again, I would. Uh, the only problem I ever had with the with the whole thing was was the fact that I had to go out to them and yeah. get that customer service experience, which I never got. 
Yeah. And that's that, and that's what I complain about. But because uh, I I paid good money to go out to them for a customer experience that didn't happen at all. And so uh, and and so I'll, I'll I'll keep talking about that for for now and forever because that's what happened. But I'm not I'm never going to complain about the price of fifteen hundred dollars that I paid for my Google Glass because of the fact I was an early adopter and uh, and I'm happy about that. Yeah, I, um, I think it's good that they're, you know, that people are analyzing it and trying to, you know, point out that Google could drop the price a lot more. I think it, it supports that. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was they were saying, oh, yeah, these are all these old, you know, parts. And it's like, well, you realize that it was two years ago, like, you know. Um, yeah, like, you're right. This week, next week. You know, uh, because this was a Google I.O. that was earlier in the year, uh, two years ago, that they announced, like, okay, we're doing this Google Glass thing, and you're going to be able to sign up, you know, at the conference today for $1,500, and then, uh, you know, we'll get them to you eventually. And it took almost a year, like, almost exactly a year uh, to get them out to people. And so it's like, yeah, two years ago, this design that you see us wearing was what they had finally said, okay, it's good enough to put out there. And Minus it was another friends, year yeah. before they released them. So like, the, those parts were probably a lot more expensive two years ago than they are now. Uh, so, yeah, well, yeah, because yeah, cause, yeah, you have raw materials, you have bulk, you have bulk pricing. I mean, they probably made yeah. their first run, they probably made, well, actually, there was a news article, if I remember correctly, they made like ten or 20,000 pair. Mm -hmm. just for that first run to make sure that everything was going to go okay. And that's what you got with your first pair was yeah. the first, uh, what was the number, 1,225? You have that on that little plastic thing. Yeah, uh, 1,278, 1,278. Yeah. Like that's, that's my number. So you were 1,278 of maybe, let's say, uh, 8,000 8, 8, 8, pair. Yeah, uh, just to like just to be like that. So um, you, you, that's technically your co uh, collector's pair. I ended up getting series two, technically, mm -hmm. uh, the second run of the first version. Yeah. Uh, but now we've both got version two, and and uh, I've gone through six pair of Google Glass. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Although so I saw somebody actually, they said they went through four, uh, 13 pair of Google Glass. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but Ooh. I'd like to meet that guy or girl. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I think we got that to death. You know, 150 bottom line is, uh, I don't, you know, $80, $150, I understand that. For us early adopters, we paid $1,500 because we wanted to get into the, into the program and be one of the first people to have this. And, uh, and then, uh, that, but now it's time to start really thinking about price reductions. Unless you're clearing out stock for, uh, for version three of Google Glass or the the uh, the the public version of Google Glass, which might have a better processor, might have an eight megapixel camera in it, might have a mm. might have a light on top of it, or you know something like yeah. that, um, or a better better battery or or whatnot. So uh, you know if, if that's the case, then get rid of them. Let's get this version three out there and let's just get this part done. Um, but if not, if this is the going to be the production model, then seven hundred dollars. In fact, that you know, I ask people when I when I talk to them on Twitter, and they say about six to seven hundred dollars, they'd be okay with actually purchasing a pair of Google Glass, mm -hmm. as opposed to three four hundred dollars. So, you got yeah. that going for you there. So yeah, I I did want to say one thing that we didn't mention in the article, and that was they did uh, hear back from a Google Glass representative. Uh, they didn't they didn't say who it was, but they said that that person said that the uh, estimate was quote wildly off. And that glass costs significantly more to produce. Okay. So, like they asked Google, Google said that number is is way off. Now, I think they would assume like low. Like <laughs> that's way off. It's like twenty bucks. You know. Like I don't think that's what they meant. Uh, I think they meant it's way off, and it's much higher than that. Uh, but they didn't come out and say, you know, exactly how much it costs because you know, like. Like we kind of talked about, like, well, there's some software costs, and then there's some R&D, and there might be some other costs, and there's the early adopter fee. And so there's some other, there's some other kind of things in there, but we don't. Uh, yeah. But Google did, did respond to this assessment and say, 
Mm, that's not right. So, you know, uh, I think it's good because, you know, if they can source all these materials and they can find them cheaper, that's a great, um, you know, I think, you know, you know, there's two sides to every story. So, you know, we don't want to, um, you know, you got to consider the source of each one yeah. as well, you know. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, how good, what's Google going to say about their $1,500 product? You know, probably what Apple would say about their product, right? It's the most amazing thing ever, yeah. you know, and that kind of stuff. You know, that, or, you know people are going to talk good about their own stuff. So, yeah. Um, you, you don't do anything bad until somebody says you got it, uh, until somebody slaps you on the wrist, which is, yeah. you know, you said Apple, a perfect example. I remember when the, the 3G phone came out and everybody was having a problem connecting. And they wanted to recall on the phones, but then uh, Steve Jobs put out a software patch and poof, everything got fixed. Same thing with what was it, the 4 or 4S, when they changed the antennas. And everybody yeah. was complaining because that antenna was in the wrong place. Your hand gets in the way and, and blocks the signal. And all of a sudden, poof, they put out a rubber bumper and everybody was happy. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, and, so uh, there, there's ways to deal with uh, criticism. And, yeah. Uh, so, you and, know. And there's always going to be people. Yeah. So no, I think I think it's good. I mean, it's, it's great that people are tearing it apart and telling us what's in there. Uh, yeah. Because that's that's the thing that we can't do. We can't just take these apart and look inside without uh, avoiding all the warranty stuff. So that's that's what I was going to do with this pair, but now I'm just going to send them back and go from yeah. there. So yeah. They got nice anyway. Pictures, so. All right. Well, we went a little bit over here. So Luke, why don't you tell us where they can find you in the space with your big letters? So. Uh, Again, my name is Luke Luca on Twitter, L-U-K-E-L-U-C-A. I'm Luke Luca almost everywhere, uh, uh, except on Google Plus where I'm Luke Wallace, which is my name. Uh, you can see it down here uh, in the video. Uh, look for me on uh, google.com slash plus Luke Wallace. Uh, you can uh, find me playing Hearthstone as Luke Luca. Uh, you can also contact me, Luke, at twig.tv. Uh, it's L-U-K-E at T-W-I-G-G dot TV. Um, you can see it here in the video. Uh, or uh, you can buy a shirt from me at uh, BigLettersShirt.com. Uh, not any particular reason, but, you know, hey, if you have a great idea, uh, you can also send that to me. That's cool, too. Um, I, got, I got a theme song for you on that. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. You can go, <laughs> Big Letter Shirt, I wear you like dirt. Let's have a party. Let's I think I know that song. I think yeah. I know what song you're using. What are you there. talking about? I just made that up. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So. All right. Well, of course, you can find me over at geekazine.com. Think Magazine. Put in a geek. You've got Geekazine. Of course, Jeff at twig.tv. Uh, geekazine is the Twitter handle. And, uh, yeah, Jeff at twig.tv. Or go to This Week in Google Glass. When you go to thisweekingoogleglass.com, you'll, you'll be asked. Uh, you can subscribe to the show. Um, you can send your email, and, uh, and we'll get your show notes to your email box and go from there. So, and, of course, subscribe to the Google Plus group over at plus.google.com forward slash plus this week in Google Glass. The YouTube channel is just this week in Glass because I couldn't do Google Glass in it. Um, other than that, we're, uh, we'll be back next week. Next week, Luke, one year. Now, technically, I started the show on April 19th, uh, just kind of putting a place marker out there. But the first show I did with you, Luke, was on May 21st. So next week, we're going to be celebrating the 41st episode and, of course, uh, the one-year anniversary. So have some birthday cake or some anniversary cake ready and a big letter shirt. I will definitely try to do that. Okay, sounds good. So. <laughs> All right, well, thanks a lot for watching. Of course, we do this show every single Monday night live at about 9 p.m. Eastern time. That's about, uh, what, 6 p.m. Pacific. Um, you can go over and check it out. We'll have the link over at This Week in Google Glass on YouTube and, uh, and, uh, and go from there, and you can watch it. You can answer, ask questions, and we'll try and answer them as we go and go from there. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. My name is Jeffrey Powers. We will see you next week when it will be another episode of This Week in Google Glass. Take care. Let's have a party.